Hey everybody, Ben with Classic Firearms here. Let's talk Yugo SKSs. We just got in our large shipment of Yugo SKSs that we're so proud of. These are so nice as you can see here. I'm outside today. Just a few moments ago, I walked outside and saw some of our warehouse guys were cleaning up a few of these, getting them out of their Cosmoly so we could take photos for our website and our homepage and also to include on our emails. They had three of them cleaned up. I said, guys, hold on, let me get on this thing because it was an opportune time to answer a couple of questions. Uh, before we get into that, though, let me show you these SKs. As I said, they've cleaned up two or three here. We told them to go in the crates and pick two or three examples of different color contrasts that you would see with the stocks. This one is a nice honey blonde. As you see, it's very consistent. These rifles give every appearance of being unissued. They are just beautiful rifles with the bluing and the stocks also. Let's see if we got a little bit of a different contrast. Here's another one with a darker stock that has a little more grain. Different people have different preferences. We don't really allow for a selection as far as stock color, but I did want you to see some of the differences that we have here. And even though they're a little different color-wise with the makeup of the wood, they're all very consistent, very, very nice condition rifles. And here's another one. Going back to a little more of the honey blonde color. As you can see, beautiful bluing. Aaron, if you can come in. Uh, everything we've seen so far has matching numbers, matching number of the bolt and the receiver, the magazine, the trigger guard, etc. Very, very nice. So uh, you can see the condition on them. Back to the two questions we talked about, though. Every time we have surplus that comes in crated, and particularly if it's packed in Cosmoline, people call us and say, uh, how do we clean that Cosmoline off, and how do we disassemble the rifle so that we can clean the Cosmoline? While the tables were set up and they were doing this, I saw a good opportune time to show you that. So let me give you some examples. This is basically one of the rifles, the way it comes out of the crate, it is in a light coating of Cosmoline, but as you can see that Cosmoline is very, very sticky. And we do need to get it off the weapon so we clean it up and get it ready to fire. This Cosmoline protects them, it's a great rust inhibitor while they've got them stored in the arsenals. It'll keep that weapon like new for years and years and years, but when you get ready to uh, fire it, of course you want to get the Cosmoline off. You know, different people use different methods. We've had some people say use brake cleaner or put it in a hot shower with you, all kind of stuff. I've heard all kind of different uh, theories on what to do it with. We always like to use plain old mineral spirits and I'll show you why. Let me just give you a little brief example. We're not gonna clean the entire gun here because the last thing anybody needs to watch for 10 minutes is a fat guy cleaning a bunch of gun parts. But I can show you how this mineral spirit will literally just dissolve this Cosmoline. We'll let that sit there for a moment and soak. This is just plain mineral spirits in a bottle. You can see here, we've been cleaning some weapons already. The mineral spirit starts out clear, but you can see the Cosmoline that is cut out of those weapons uh, just by dipping our brush back and forth. This is a light, not even industrial brush, just for home use like washing car tires and so forth. Very light brush. Aaron, if you can get it on that. You can see the Cosmoline on that bayonet when it started. As you see on this side, a little bit of mineral spirits. Thins it right out and takes it away. Same thing on the bolt. You can literally watch that stuff starting to cut and come off with the mineral spirits. So all of the metal parts, as you disassemble your rifle, we recommend mineral spirits. Anything petroleum based will actually work. Kerosene, gasoline, diesel fuel. But uh, we find this to be a little less caustic. It leaves a very light, oily film on the weapon when you're done. And it even works really well on the stocks without leaving the stocks chalky and so forth like a lot of other more caustic products will. Get a rag, clean that up a little bit. So 
amazing difference. Just that little bit of mineral spirits in a few seconds. Thins that stuff right down. And you can see the end result. Now, of course, we didn't clean this thing in its entirety. And again, you'll want to disassemble it, which we're going to show you how to do here in just a moment. But when you do get your parts disassembled, we recommend Mineral Spirits. It'll strip it right off. Let me set this stuff out of the way. I'm going to wipe my hands down. We're going to take a little break, and I'm going to come right back, and we're going to do disassembly and reassembly of a very nice Yugo SKS rifle. Be right back. All right, folks, we're back. We want to take one of our cleaned up rifles that we've already cleaned just so it's not so greasy and slippery in my hands and show you how to do a complete disassembly and reassembly on an SKS rifle. Now there used to be a lot of confusion in the marketplace and some of that still exists on people who aren't familiar with the SKS rifles. Part of the reason is this right here. This is the cross bolt on an SKS. I know the first time I received an SKS rifle uh, 25 years ago, I thought because that is slotted with a machine screw slot that certainly you have to take the cross bolt out to disassemble the rifle. There's even a commercial cross bolt tool that they sell because you sell anything you can make a dollar on, right? That allows you to take that cross bolt out. But as you'll see, there's no reason to ever take that cross bolt out. It does not go through anything on the weapon or hold anything together. We're gonna start with this one by pulling our bolt open and being assured our safety is in the on or up position. Both of those are not only a safety step, but they're a necessary step in disassembling the rifle. With the safety in the on position, just below the trigger guard in the rear is what's called a detent button. We're gonna press in on that. I'm using a Phillips screwdriver just because I had one handy. If you're in the field, you can actually use a cartridge tip and press in on that and it releases the trigger housing. And the trigger will come out as a one piece unit while I'm holding that, let you see, these are all one-piece milled triggers. Very, very nice, high quality on these Yugo weapons. Once that is out, as long as your bolt is open, which this one is, you can remove your 10-round mag, and it's just that simple. Pull the 10-round mag out, lay it down. Then we can take pressure off our bolt, and you're ready to move the, remove the bolt assembly. We're gonna do that by lifting the lever here that holds on the receiver cover work it out. There goes your receiver cover, your recoil spring, and your bolt assembly. This is the bolt carrier. I see we left a little cosmoline on that one. Not a big deal though. A little bit don't hurt anything. And there's the lower bolt itself uh, that carries the firing pin. While we're here, let me tell you guys about SKS bolts and firing pins. SKS is incorporate a free floating firing pin. That means, let me get somewhere I can hold this. It is still a little greasy. That means the firing pin literally free floats backwards and forward within the body of the bolt. So with an SKS, you always want to keep that firing pin and the bolt assembly very clean. Any debris that could stick that in the out position will cause a slam fire to take place. It will make it fire upon closing of the bolt. So you want it where that firing pin can always recede back in the bolt face until it is tapped by the hammer to fire the ram. Anyway, there's your lower bolt. Get back to disassembly. There's a lever here that releases the gas piston and the uh, gas tube. We're gonna pull it to the half position. Take off our gas tube inside the tube. Get the piston. See, we left a little cosmoline on that too. And then under the gas piston, up under the rear side aperture, will be your op rod and the op rod spring. Once that is out, your weapon is uh, virtually out of the stock. We're going to take out the cleaning rod just so we get it fully disassembled. And once the cleaning rod is out, Barreled action will separate from the stock. And as you can see, the cross member is still in the stock. Here's your barreled action. That's grenade launcher sights that they have on a Yugo SKS. 
they just flip up and down. And of course the Yugos also incorporate the night sights that also flip up and down. At any rate, your weapon's completely apart now. No need to ever disassemble it further than that. For cleaning purposes, of course, you want to clean out your bore. Again, I would utilize mineral spirits. Clean out your gas port. Clean out your, your uh, gas tube with your piston. Be sure all of that stuff is clean of grease and debris. You get it reassembled and you're ready to go. So let's put it back together. We're going to st stick it back in the stock. You can put it back together from the top or the bottom. I tend to like to do it from the bottom. That way I don't have to worry about opening my bolt when I'm done. So we go back in with our magazine. The only thing is sometimes the triggers are a little bit difficult to get in because you have to press them together. And it's easier to press together when the top's on it, but typically I don't have any trouble. Once your safety will reseat, you know that you put the trigger housing in properly. From that point, you can put your op rod back in. Now be careful, that is spring loaded. If you take pressure off of the spring, it will shoot out of the weapon. Sometimes they're hard to find if you lose them. So be careful with that. Let's see, here's my piston. It goes back in the gas tube. And the gas tube locks securely back on the rifle. And just put your lever back down in place. So we're good there. Your bolt carrier holds your bolt, your lower bolt, in that manner there. It's kind of like a little jigsaw puzzle. It will only go together one way. So go ahead and put those together. You need to open your magazine so it'll slide past that. Drop it down in the guide rails and take it forward. Now your bolt and bolt carrier are back in the weapon. Your recoil spring has a thick side and a thin side or a curly side and a straight side. The curly side always goes up the bolt. Put that up the bolt. I like to go ahead and push it forward and just let it rest right there inside the frame <laughs> until I have my receiver cover on. There we go. Once the receiver cover is on, and you take pressure off the bolt, you will hear that spring pop into place. Listen to this. There it went. And there she is. All the way down and back together, even with the explanation in just a couple of minutes. It's one of the most user-friendly rifles on the market. This particular group is extremely nice. They're very accurate. I would encourage you to get one. And for more details, as always, you can see them on our site. Come visit us at www.classicfirearms.com.